Police services, can we help you? Hello? Hello, I just shot my wife in the head and I don't think she's breathing anymore. I have my kids tied up and I think I'm going to kill myself and set the house on fire. And what's the address this happened at? Two Okay, what's your name, sir? My name is Tristan. Okay, why did you and do I this, Tristan? You know, I, we, me and my wife were arguing and just got out of control and I shot her in the head and then my kids were freaking out and yelling. I, I taped her mouth closed and I tied them up and I did. I don't know what to do, and I think I'm going to set the house on fire and kill myself. I already put gasoline everywhere. And how many kids are there in the house with you? Two. Two kids? How old are they? Fifteen and twelve. Where are the kids at? latest trend in cyber terrorism. Used against celebrities, sporting events, even schools, its popularity is exploding. Just last year, American schools reported a 546% increase in false reports, with experts believing the real number to be much higher. In this video, you'll hear from victims as well as swatters themselves on how this practice has destroyed lives and terrorized communities, and how you can take steps to defend yourself. But first... This is the police. We have your Cook Unity order. Cook Unity? Come on in. Last month, I ate what's probably the best burrito I've ever had. It came not from a restaurant, but from a meal delivery service called Cook Unity. These guys partner with award-winning chefs to deliver healthy, restaurant-quality meals right to your doorstep. They have a chef named Jose Garces who makes amazing Mexican food. My favorites are the chorizo breakfast burrito, the mission-style chicken burrito, and the chipotle chicken quesadilla. They have a huge selection of hundreds of meals that can meet anyone's tastes or nutrition needs. If you're trying to put on muscle, check out the protein only section. If you want something more balanced, there's a section for that too. When you find a meal you like, you can check out the profile of the chef that cooked it and even order more meals by the same chef. You can order anywhere from 4 to 16 meals a week and the plans are flexible, letting you skip deliveries, pause, or cancel anytime. Subscriptions start as low as $11 a meal. Go to cookunity.com slash 1050 or click the link in the description and use the code on screen to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals to try them out for yourself. So click the link below and enjoy the rest of the video. A young man enjoys a peaceful evening in his Kansas home, when suddenly a chorus of police sirens erupt outside. As he opens his front door, he's hit by a blinding spotlight. Through a white haze, a single bullet rips through his chest. Andrew Finch was the first person to die from swatting. The 911 call that ended his life was made by a serial swatter named Tyler Barris. After the shooting, Barris went on drama alert to explain his actions. I was minding my own business at the library. Someone contacted me and said, hey, dude, this fucking retard just gave me his address and he thinks nothing's going to happen. You want to, you know, prove him wrong? And I said, sure, I love swatting kids who think that nothing's going to happen. He basically messaged me with an address saying, uh, well, I'm waiting for you to do something pussy, this and that. And then uh, an attempt was made to swat that address. You swatted that address, correct? Sure. Do you take any responsibility for what happened? Um, the argument can be made that the police would have never showed up if I didn't make the call. However, um, you could point the finger at the cop who killed someone. You could point the finger at the guy who made the call. You could point the finger at the person who provided the address saying, Oh, look, this is where I live. Go ahead and swap me. So it's really debatable. Barris was no ordinary prank caller. By this point, he had already served 16 months in jail over bomb threats to a TV station, and his alias had been tied to 30 separate swattings. He's now serving 20 years in federal prison. Finch's death, along with the city's $5 million legal settlement, kickstarted a wave of policy changes for police departments across the country, allowing dispatch operators to second-guess suspicious callers. Hello, Stanford Police. Um, I'm here to report myself for doing a crime. Okay, and what did you do? I killed my dad. 
I shot a move as a gun. You shot him with a gun? Yeah. What's your name? My name is... We're gonna come down and talk to you. Um, I'm scared. You're scared? Yeah. Like, I don't wanna go to jail. Okay. I did make a hydrogen bomb, just in case I needed to. Guys, guys, fuck, fuck. Wait, what? What's going What's on? What's going on? I'm in the police, bro. Hello? Hello? Yeah, who is that? The, uh, so I'm playing like a game right now at the same time, so that's just someone on the microphone. I was playing, I'm playing, I'm playing Fortnite this way. Okay, so you're playing Fortnite after you shot your dad with your dad's revolver, and you called the routine police number to turn yourself in for... Yeah, because I was Volume really play. nervous. Like, Fortnite helps me stay calm. Okay. You know we had a call like this very similar earlier tonight. No. Okay, because it's kind of suspicious. Right, we're going to come down and talk to everybody, but this this just sounds very familiar for something someone called in before. Oh. It turned out to not be true. Bad timing, I guess. Yeah, and then you made a hydrogen bomb. That, that's a little crazy, too, you know? Well, I'm a crazy person. What can I say? I learned some. So why didn't you call 911? Um, cuz. Cuz, and no one heard a gunshot. How many times you shoot him? I shot him three times. Three times, okay. One in the head, two in his body. Gotcha. Alright, well, I'm gonna stay on the phone with you until they get there. Hopefully, they find you over there. No fucking way. No, 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 he's oh already my found god, my god. Sorry, sorry. I was gonna originally just do like a pizza, but there's no nothing in the area that's even open. <laughs> they have to come anyway. And he was being like, like such a dickhead about it, so he's like, mm-hmm, okay. How long until they come? Until they come? They're, they're there now. They're walking up to you. Uh, Where's the gun now? I'm holding it. Where's your father now? Is he in the kitchen, the bathroom, the bedroom? He's in the living room. Is he on the couch? Is he on the floor? Um... You don't know where the father you shot is No, current. no, I'm saying I don't know where to pull. I thought you asked if I had a pool. Okay, so so again, where is your father now? Is he on he's, the couch? Is he on he's the in my room. Oh, he's not in the living room anymore? Now he's in your room? Like, he's in between, like, the door, if you know what I mean, like... Okay, so, uh, funny enough, your father's fine right now. I think he got revised. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got the uh, reboot card. Down and talk to us? What? <laughs> You're so funny, man. How about you come talk to us? <laughs> yeah, you won't do shit. <laughs> Yes. So this is just what losers like you do. You just call SWAT and attempts all the time. Just waiting for fun. <laughs> it's funny though because we're gonna find you. No, you're not. Family. No, you're not. You know, no, you're not. You're not gonna find me. Not every SWAT call is convincing enough to provoke a violent police response. But that doesn't stop the swatter from trying again. This group swatted the same victim over a dozen times, going as far as to sending bomb threats to his high school. Another swatting call in Stanford this morning. Police say at around 10.15, a threatening call was made to Stanford High School. The school was put into lockdown until about 11.15 a.m. But keep in mind, this is the second swatting incident at that school in less than a week. Was your house the one that was swatted 10 times? Yeah. It was by Potts, Arian, and their team. He had added me to a group chat with a bunch of other guys who ended up being Potts and Arian and stuff. And they immediately started telling me that they know where I, like my school is and other guests I'd found threats to them. If I don't comply with them or whatever, I refused to do it because I didn't want to be involved with this. And eventually the police came knocking on my door. The first time he got swatted, we swatted him about 10 minutes later. So that just shows how incompetent the police are. The funny thing is, they don't really keep that many records. If there's a different operator, you could probably swat them again. If there's another police department in the area, which you might think they would like, transfer that information onto them that there's been false swats. They still don't transfer that information. There's usually one, two, three other police departments near them, which they can easily get swatted back to back. It's very easy to get like more additional law enforcement units. If we want to do that, we act like we're like mentally unstable. So we're like, oh, I don't want you guys to arrest me. So if you enter, I'm going to like light up the house on fire. And then in that case, two things will come. The fire department, the ambulance, and a negotiator on site. These incidents aren't just limited to harassment. Swattings are being used increasingly to extort victims into sending money, limiteds, or worse. I own a Dominus on Roblox. They were like 
you want the Dominus. I obviously told them that I was like, yeah, no. I was like, I was not gonna happen. They started threatening me. They started telling me my address and started saying that there's a guest SWAT team there. They said they were gonna kidnap me. You know, I didn't listen to the demand, so I ended up just leaving McCall. And my mom comes to my room and just starts yelling, says, the police are here. I was just like, oh no. Because they were out there with you know, like ARs and stuff. They were just full blown military tactical vests. I live in a gate community. They park like tons of squad cars all the way to the front because apparently these guys said that I kidnapped my family took them all in my closet, killed them all, and held my mom at gunpoint. They're pretending to be mean, saying that I had my mom at gunpoint as a killer. So my mom conveniently, thank God, she was taking out the trash. They still yelled and told her to put her hands up and stuff like that. But they kind of knew right away that this was a false SWAT call. I have a friend who yells with all these people. He told me these people were like associate with one of these like gangs on Roblox. They're called 764 in Cascar. What they do is they do like swattings. They do bricking. They hire someone to go to your house and throw a brick at your window. They extort people. They uh, also extort girls online to like actually cut stuff into their skin. Protecting yourself from swatting requires a multi-layered approach that starts with privacy. Any personal information you've entered into any website can be used against you. Even sites that seem secure can leak your info if they experience a data breach. Do you know how they found your real name? Apparently those at data breach on Roblox not too long ago. In any account that was before 2016, your data was just on mail, like your email, your number. And they used my number, reverse searched my name, found out my name, found out my address and just went from there. If I have to give up my email and my phone number, data breaches in general shouldn't happen. By personal information, that leaked from that. Did they notify you when that happened? Uh, no. They don't notify anybody. And when they have their personal email, we can check their Google reviews. So it's very fu easy to find their general location where they've put like reviews in their area, like restaurants or whatever. And also uh, finding their public records too. It just shows like their full name, birthday, address, and emails. That's the problem of America. Everything is public. So it's very easy to dox people, swap people. <laughs> Nationwide uptick in swatting calls the past few years. Police in Stamford are hoping a recent arrest will help deter the calls from happening. On Thursday, Stamford police announced the arrest of a juvenile from Maryland. Authorities say their five month investigation started in September when a swatting call falsely reported a critical incident at a residence on Southfield Avenue. Over the next few months, police received several more swatting calls to the same residence and four more swatting calls to Stanford High School. It's a tremendous waste of resources. At any point in time, uh, our response could result in an accident, could result in an officer getting hurt, can, can result in someone in the city getting hurt. It's fun and games until someone gets hurt, but we will find you and we will arrest you. And police determined the swatting calls stem from an online gaming feud. Recently, I had one of the agents Go on a text now account and like harass Lieutenant Jerry Jones. We're gonna be like bomb threatening like a lot of Stanford public areas. If you ever find yourself in the middle of a swatting, the last thing you should do is post about it. Doing so encourages the swatter by giving them attention and confirmation that their attack was successful. Instead, contact your local police and let them know your address is at risk of further swattings. This way, if another attempt is made, the police response will be non-violent and the swatter will have no idea if their attempts are working. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, consider checking out our sponsor, Cook Unity. I'm Ruben Sim. Thanks for watching.